It is perhaps the most diverse country in all of Africa, with over 250 different ethnic groups, each with its unique socio-political system and cultural inclination. After about a century of colonial domination, the 40 or so million citizens who had waited with bated breath for the day the reins of the colonial overlords will be shattered, were united in hope and happiness as the British Union Jack on the 1st of October 1960 gave way to the luxuriant green and white flag of the new nation. As the Premier, Sir Abu Bakr Tafawa Balewa, in the company of the last Governor-General, walked and waved to the cheering crowd. The air filled with jubilant energy, and at last it was here. The birth of the new nation, Nigeria. There was a national call for identity materials, as the blue, red and white Union Jack gave way to the green and white. So must a new anthem replace the reverberations of the British song, God Save the Queen, which the people of the colony had chorused with vassal sufferance since 1914. The new Nigerian anthem must be one that will resonate and foster a unified identity all through the land and abroad the seas. A song that must create a singular goal of progress through patriotism, or so the people thought. As if to mock the nascent aspirations of the people and their desires for a new identity rid of British influence, the first Nigerian national anthem, Nigeria We Hail Thee, fell somewhat short of the people's aspiration. It fell short of the new reality of autonomy. After all, it was still a creation of the British. <laughs> Veteran journalist Lecon Ottofonduri has researched and interviewed several individuals on the issue of Nigeria national anthems. He reflects on the feelings of some Nigerians in 1960 about the new anthem. Considering that we are talking of October 1960, when even though we are going to get independent, and for long, the, the, the vestiges of uh, colonialism was still going to be around, it, was, uh, it would be expecting too much that uh, so many such so, so would change almost immediately. And uh, I'm not very sure about who are the people we even selected. Even for those who selected who are Nigerians, they were, many of them were still British in mind. Though this anthem hailed Nigeria and exalted its beautiful potential in togetherness, it altogether failed to impress Nigerians. Some have argued that while the music itself was bearable, the words were in some way a grim reflection of colonial reasoning. Singer-songwriter Ayinke Martins recalls this anthem. Um, some of the words did not satisfy me, like our own dear native land. You could tell that it, wasn't, it was written by somebody who thought of Nigerians as their natives. And, um, tribe and tongue, I mean, for goodness sake, we don't call the Scottish, the British, the, the Scottish, the English and the Irish tribes, so I don't know why we should be called tribes in Africa, but beyond that, it was smooth, it made you feel like you belonged, and um, there was kind of a godly air about it. Overall, there was significant disapproval of the new national anthem, and criticism grew intensely as the years passed. So great was this displeasure, especially amongst the new nationalist movements, that there were public arguments made for the consideration of a new anthem, barely one year into independence. Trumpet player, band leader and lecturer at the Lagos State University, Biodon Edebi, comments, Immediately the national anthem was released and was played, people that knew about nationalism rejected it. People that knew about music rejected it. And so agitation started. So for Brenda and Williams that put the, the lyrics and the melody of Nigeria, we held it together. It was exotism for them, it was not nationalism. Because they are not from here. Art historian Dr. Deemi Akonde of the University of Lagos shares his thoughts. I think the main scruple with uh, Nigeria's first national anthem, Nigeria with LD, is the fact that it was composed by two British persons, Lillian Williams and Frances Bader. At that time, the general spirit was very inclined towards uh, 
uh, a new identity that would be totally representative of new Nigeria and wholly um, created by Nigerians. So one can imagine that the issues that plagued the anthem were perhaps more ideological rather than technical. So they felt that, I mean, Nigerians competed for that thing. They should have been given. You know, now you have two British ladies. You are saying we are not good enough. And so it's a sign that you are, you are not really, 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 really committed to this independence. It's also a continuation of the anti-colonial battle. So they wanted to say that, look, we are opposed to this. Give us a national anthem that is ours. The energy generated by the clamoring for a new anthem was a significant source of irritation to the government of the First Republic. It will appear, however, that the government of the time had a bit of ill luck with matters concerning professional musicianship. Key sources suggest that the government moved to commission a celebrated Nigerian composer to create a new national anthem just a couple of years into independence. But needless to say, it didn't quite go as planned. There was also the issue of a symphony the government had asked for from the internationally reputed Nigerian musicologist. That's correct. Uh, that would be Professor Felasho Wande. In 1960, uh, the government commissioned Felasho Wande to compose a folk symphony uh, for the independence celebrations. Felasho Wande, to me, as a musicologist and as a jazz musician, I see the man not just as a singular person, I see him as a school of thought. This man had composed so many songs, Akinla, the, the, a lot of Negro spiritual. He was actually the father of Negro spirituals in Nigeria. Well, um, Felasho Wande was a man who was trained in classical music and then he went on to become a jazz musician because he was a ground, grounded, grounded and a sound musician. I've listened to some of the music that he's played, he played in the past and um, his music has been beautiful, you know, beautiful. Even up till today on YouTube, people are still make people who are just coming into his music from all over the world are still making comments, you know, good, great comments about the music. The federal government's relationship with Professor Fela Shawande had begun in the mid-1950s. He helped to establish the Department of Music at the then Nigeria Broadcasting Corporation. Pre-independence in 1960, the government commissioned Fela Shawande to compose a folk symphony to mark the nation's independence. Shawande did, but the government rejected the symphony. The New York Philharmonic Orchestra would eventually premiere the very same symphony in the prestigious Carnegie Hall in 1962, just two years after its rejection by the federal government of Nigeria. Fela Shawande was an enigma. He had the type of uh, musical and academic career that many would require two lifetimes to be able to even scratch the surface of his achievements. Before Nigeria could give its full attention to the matter of a new national anthem, the young nation, in only seven years of sovereignty, would be plunged into the maelstrom of a bitter civil war. With the bitter war also went the melody of Nigerian music. It will take a further decade under the leadership of Olushegong Obasanjo, for the country to revisit the issue of a national anthem. This came in 1978. When we speak of the 1978 anthem, you often hear of one name. Uh, Odiase. Ben Odiase. Benedict Elide Odiase enlisted in the Nigeria Police Force on the 1st of March 1954. He trained at the then Southern Police College 
now Police College Ikeja. After his rudimentary training, he was posted to the police band in Obalende Police Barracks, under the superintendence of Frank Buckmaster. The young Odiasi secured his Ordinary General Education Certificate in 1960 and his Advanced Level Certificate in 61 from Wosley Hall Correspondence College, London. In 1962, he proceeded to the Royal Military School of Music, Nella Hall, Twickenham, London. Further musical studies from 1976 to 1981 earned him full membership of the Royal College of Music and by July 1979, Odiasi was admitted a fellow of the prestigious Victoria College of Music, Staple Inn, London. Odiasi was the first indigenous director of music for the Nigeria Police Band since it was established in 1892. During his career, he set up several police bands in area commands and was centrally involved in the training of police bands in several African countries. In 1978, after the government announced the winning entries for the lyrics of a proposed anthem, Odiasi took upon himself the task of composing the music for the new national anthem. Constance Odiasi Amu relates the story told to her by her father about composing the music for the 78 anthem. My name is Constance Unlagbo Odiasi Amu, daughter of Benedict Eredi Odiasi. From what my dad told me about the composition of the national anthem, um, there were advertisements from the federal government to bring in entries for those that will be able to compose the national anthem. And he, he said he did, he did that during the midnight hours, between 12 a.m. and 2, p, 2 a.m., where it was um, very quiet for him to be able to articulate his thoughts and the musical notes and choral, coming it into a recording tape. And that was how he was able to do it. It lasted for like six weeks, six weeks before he, he put in his entry into the, for the federal government. He composed it in our home in Lagos, um, precisely Police College, Ikeja. If you read about Benedict Odias' career and life story, you, you can't but agree that he was a man of destiny, like he was born uh, to do that job. He had the requisite skill, he had the temperance, uh, and what have you for it. It's important to note that in 1978, when Odiasi took on this job to compose the music for the anthem, Nigeria already had a long history of some of the most elite bands uh, that the continent had to offer. So the standards were very high. Um, high life music in those days was the manufacturing hub for these great bands and musicians. And we had also some of the best hunsmen uh, the continent could uh, present. We had folks like uh, Bobby Benson, there was Zilonia, there was Edil Kunta, Victor Laya, Roy Chicago, uh, Rex Lawson, um, Bala Mila, uh, Fela Ransom, Kuti later Fela, um, Anikulapo. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. These are the great music pyramids from Africa and ready to be swinging. And I'm sure with what we've got in stock for you tonight. Great guest artists. On behalf of you wonderful viewers. I'd like to say to all of you, happy viewing today for you. In, in those days, high life was the thing. You know, it had come in from Ghana, and that was like the, the, the Ghanaians set the templates for the, the music of the, of the uh, continent in, in, in those days because it was a mixture of African traditional rhythms and jazz. And it was very, it was very, her life was very, very elegant. Men and women used to hold their hands and wear their ball gowns and, you know, rock to it. So um, her life was the, it was the in thing. In 2001, the Nigerian government conferred on Odeasi the national honor of the member of the Order of the Niger. Assistant Police Commissioner Benedict Elide Odeasi 
passed on the 11th of June 2013 and is often referred to as the man who composed the Nigerian national anthem Arise, O Compatriots. True as this is, there is a slight historical glitch here. When he died, there was that national mourning about the man who composed this song we sing every morning, everywhere at important position, I died. And people were condoling. And even some of the statements from government officials were like, the man who composed the music. But being a journalist who also sometimes tries to look uh, between the lines, I remember that I saw, I got, a, I got an email saying that uh, as much as he wants to condole with this family of this man, for historical purpose, he composed the music and not the lyrics. So what we've learned is that instead of having one, the lines from different ones were picked. So what you call our national anthem is a combination from these five people. But the music that was done, unfortunately, has taken over, has overshadowed the lyrics itself. We shouldn't be. Because, in fact, ideally, I mean, you should be talking about the lyrics. The lyrics is the one that is important. Without the lyrics, there cannot be the music. Five of them were taken. And out of these five people, none of them was a known composer. But they wrote good lyrics, they got their lyrics together and fused all of them into one. And they gave these lyrics to Nigerian police band to set into music. The, the director then was uh, Assistant Commissioner of Police, Ben Odiase, Benedict Odiase. The other five composers, none of the, their names were mentioned, but all of a sudden, the composer, the lyricist, the orchestrator became Ben Odiase. Pa Benedict Odiase is unquestionably a blessing to the nation. His professionalism and character frankly precedes him. And honestly, from all I gathered, he is a thoroughbred patriot. So even he will not stand for the watering down of um, historical facts. Perhaps by some type of institutional dementia, this true but inaccurate story of the singularity of Paul Diasse and the national anthem, it just grew and became acceptable. It is completely true that Pa Benedict Odiase composed the music for the 1978 anthem, but he did this only after five extremely cerebral and patriotic Nigerians crafted the lyrics of the anthem uh, Arise, O Compatriots. So it's a major historical fallacy, I mean, to have missed that kind of important thing. In some other countries, those people would be heroes. You know, they will always be acknowledged for doing this for us, more so that is still our national anthem. But nobody seems to be talking about them. Sometimes I, I don't understand why we even just ignore this. I don't really understand it. On Thursday, the 11th of May, 1978, the Nigerian Tribune published the names of five Nigerians whose entries to the call for the lyrics of a new anthem had made the final pick out of a total of 1,499 entries submitted. The government acknowledged that the lyrics of the 85-word anthem was stitched together out of the entries of five Nigerians. Beyond this initial news release, nothing more was heard of these bright Nigerians. It was as if they had all disappeared. After an article by Lecon Otofonduri in the national newspaper on the 22nd of June 2013, Pa Phillips Atarabigbi contacted Otofonduri, and the meeting led to a renewed interest in the matter of putting out a more accurate story of the history of the 1978 national anthem. Art historian Deyemi Akonde, on the other hand, was independently investigating the history of the 78 anthem. Akonde's search crossed paths with Otto von Dury's articles, and this gave energy to his quest. I wanted to see if uh, these individuals were still alive. It was important for me as a history teacher to try and set historical facts right, if I could find them, especially in a case such as this where the key actors may still be alive to speak for themselves. I was aware and frankly worried that if I succeeded in finding these um, five honorable citizens, that this may 
easily be misunderstood by the simple-minded as an attempt to take away from uh, the dignity of the work of Pa Benedict Odiase. The more accurate version of the history of our anthem will in fact reinforce um, Pa Benedict Odiase's um, acuteness and skill at creating music under uh, whatever situation. So uh, I was um, energized and I set out to look for these uh, national heroes. Where all previous attempts had fallen short, for the first time in 42 years since the anthem was first sung, University of Lagos researcher Deemi Akande was able to find all the five lyricists of the 1978 Nigeria National Anthem. These five lyrical geniuses are John A. Ilechiku, Eme Etim Apan, Babatsunde Ogunaike, Sota Omoigui, and P. Olushigon Aderibigbi. John A. Ilechiku, lecturer, civil servant, published author, poet, and brilliant administrator. During his meritorious public service career, he will hold key administrative positions in the northern part of Nigeria, eventually rising to the rank of Deputy Director of Administration with the Federal Civil Service. John Ilechiku, ardent football lover and a flawless supporter of youth development, a dedicated follower of the arts, and a devout Christian. Eme Etim Apan was a bank manager with the United Bank for Africa in Port Harcourt at the time she crafted the words she termed a love letter to her country. After a pioneering career in financial services, she veered into a lifelong illustrious service in social and geriatrics administration. Eme attended Holy Child Secondary School, Calabar, and later pursued professional training in the financial services. As she recalls, when she wrote her lines, she only took the opportunity to write a poem that will honor the heroes of the nation who have served this land with heart and might. She admitted that her intention for the competition was simply participatory. Dame Etim Apan is the only female of the five co-authors of the 1978 national anthem. She is still very active in providing services for the elderly through the Catholic Church of Nigeria. Babatunde Ogonaike, Professor of Bio and Chemical Engineering, Multiple Research and Academic Award recipient, an exceptional research lead in the field of process control, process modeling, and applied statistics for process operations. He obtained a bachelor's degree in chemical engineering from the University of Lagos in 1976 with first class honors. In 1981, Ogunaiki bagged both a Master of Science degree in Statistics and a Doctorate in Chemical Engineering from the University of Wisconsin. In 1982, he took up a joint appointment with two departments in the University of Lagos, Department of Chemical Engineering and the Department of Statistics, teaching courses and carrying out applied research at both ends. He would later return to the US in 1988 as a visiting professor with the University of Wisconsin. After that, he continued his research career in the United States. Professor Ogunaike owns a U.S. patent on Predictive Regulatory Controller, and he is currently still active in research and solutions for several universities globally. Ogunaike is an established guitarist, playing since his secondary school days at Government College Ibadan. He is also a former Nigerian international hockey player. He was on the Nigerian national hockey lineup in 1977. He is currently a chaired professor at the Department of Chemical Engineering, University of Delaware. Sota Amoigui, a medical doctor and excellent researcher in pain pharmacology and a specialist in anesthesia with subspeciality on pain medicine. Dr. Amoigui is board certified in anesthesia and subspeciality certification in pain medicine. He has served as an advisor to the United States 
FDA Advisory Committee on Anesthetics and Life Support Devices. Omoigui is also a best-selling author of the book Anesthesia Drug Handbooks, published in six languages and used by pain specialists and anesthesiologists all over the world. He pioneered the innovative technique of audio capnometry. He holds a United States patent for the audio capnometer and the process of continuous non-invasive hemometry, the measurement of hemoglobin. He is presently the medical director of LA Pain Clinic in Hawthorne, USA. Philips Olushigon Adiribigbi, author, political scientist and educator. Later, he attended the Lishabi Grammar School in Abeokuta. He was admitted into the prestigious University of Ibadan in 1976 to study political science. It was in his freshman year that he heard of and entered a competition to write a new Nigerian national anthem. Adiribigbi completed his bachelor degree with honors in political science and majored in electoral politics in 1979. He took on employment with the Federal Civil Service, then the National Assembly, as special assistant on political matters in the office of leader of Senate. Adirabigbi will later divest into education, with a postgraduate study in education. Teaching and carrying out research on educational management, he will rise in the cadre of the State Ministry of Education to become the principal of a Jota Secondary School. Philips Olochegan will go on to found his school Seda Philips Montessori and Midlands International School at Giwa Oke Aro. Adirabigbi is an established author with five publications, one of which is his account of his contribution to the 1978 Nigerian National Anthem. Title, Why I Wrote, Arise, O Compatriots. In Otto Fonduri's 2013 article, Dr. Sota Amoigui stated that he was looking forward to the day when all of the six contributing authors will come together in one place to celebrate their contribution and camaraderie. However, sadly, this wish will never be as Amoigui had dreamt it. One of the compatriots and co-author of the 1978 National Anthem, the first of the names published in the Tribune newspaper. John A. Ilechiku a fine academic, poet, author, civil servant, husband, father and patriot of the Nigerian nation, passed on the 10th of July in the year 2005. After about a year or so of searching for the last of the five, uh, John A. Lechuku had practically lost all hopes of finding him. And then I got this email from uh, Emeka Ilechuku was a rather short email. He just said, yes, I know him. He is my uncle. That's it. I nearly fell off my chair. I, I was dazed with um, excitement that finally I found the last of the five. But sadly, the excitement did not last as I quickly found out that um, uh, John A. Lechuku had passed on several years before. I was, um, I was instantly drained. It's unfortunate that he died and nobody even acknowledged. I don't know what happened when he was buried, whether anybody even ever mentioned that. But the good thing is that uh, you can't run away from history. So even when people start to Google or dig into this thing, you will still come across those names even though they were not angry. So I think it's unfortunate. And because even these other ones that are still alive, something, an effort must be made to really put it in, to put history in its proper operation and to be acknowledged. I'd always wondered what the initial A in his name stood for. Uh, this was one of the first questions I asked uh, the family and I was told that the A stood for Anagboso. Uh, they also informed me that this uh, loosely translates to our land will not depart or uh, your legacy will not be lost or uh, something close to that. I think this captures the essence of, um, of his life. I must mention though that um, I was opportuned uh, and honored to speak with his family. I spoke with Ebukai Lechuku. I spoke with Ada, she's abroad, but she was uh, gracious enough to join us in a, a Zoom meeting. I spoke with Emeka, Emeka is uh, John Lechuku's uh, nephew. 
I can tell you without a flinch of doubt that the legacy that J.A. Ilechuku left is a beautiful one. Um, to him, if I called, I would say, uh, John Anaboso Ilechuku, your memory will not um, depart, your legacy will not be lost, and we will not uh, forget you. Undoubtedly, the vision of nationhood as imagined by Elechuku, Apan, Ogunaiki, Omoigui, and Adarabigbi was encapsulated in the anthem, Arise, O Compatriots. It is a neighborly call to fellow citizens, whatever their station in life, to truly and consciously amalgamate in the oneness of purpose and love. After all, nothing else than love and a common goal can keep such a diverse nation together. To build a nation where peace and justice reign. Is peace reigning? Is justice reigning? There's no respect for the rule of law. There's no peace at the moment we're a nation against itself. The most important point to make is that uh, we are sliding. And nobody can deny that. We are seeing us moving in a direction that is very, very or, uh, scary. You know, we are seeing our national legacies uh, disappear. We are seeing things that we took for granted, you know, failing up. So as a country, I think we need to return back to basics. You know, we need to address those issues. We need to stop politicizing the future of this country. Anyone with the knowledge of the early history of Nigeria knows that we are far from where uh, we ought to be. We are certainly far from the years when the brilliant and eloquent Prime Minister Tafa Balewa, they used to call him the golden voice, stood on the floor of the United Nations and valiantly criticized in strong terms what he, on behalf of the young nation Nigeria, felt was an antithesis to the ideology of the United Nations. I remember those words when he said, we are willing to learn before we rush into the field of international politics, but we, we are, are totally, totally unwilling, unwilling to be diverted, to be diverted from by the ideals, the ideals which, which we, we think, think true. true. That is the reason, Mr. President, why we in Nigeria shall not be found to align ourselves as a matter of routine with any particular bloc. Indeed, I hate the very idea of blocks existing at all in the United Nations. It seems to me to be a contradiction in terms. I wasn't alive when he made that speech, but I was so proud to be Nigerian uh, the first time I saw it. The good thing I know about us is we don't fail. We are a special breed of people, Nigerians. I just wish that we could get to a point where meritocracy would be an instituted policy of the land, uh, a place where those who have done well for the nation are truly identified and rewarded. And on identifying and rewarding merits. I mean, to think that someone like a professor or a surgeon composed that song, they are not pushovers. They are not people that you can say, look, maybe their, their profile is not good enough for it. These are accomplished people. Ordinarily, there are people that were pushovers. They would have been... They are not asking for recognition for recognition's sake. They are asking for recognition because this is something that was done and it's an historical fact. They deserve national honors, you know, and short of answering for it, they keep saying, look, let it be put so that this is what happened. My, my, my counsel to government is that it's never late to get it right. They should be honored. National honors is not too small, but it's not too big to be given to these people. I'd love to say that when we speak of the 1978 Nigerian National Anthem, we speak of six Nigerian patriots. We speak of Dame Ime Etim Apan, Dr. Sota Omoigui, 
Papa Phillips Adewibigbe, Professor Baba Tunde Ogunaike, the late Pa John A. Ilechuku, and the Assistant Commissioner of Police Benedict Lide Udiase. Let us never forget.